Hello and welcome to UAS Magazine's panel preview podcast series. I'm your host, Dana Bastian. The UAS Summit and Expo is coming up October 4th through the 5th in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Today, I'm really excited to have a record number of guests joining me for today's podcast. I'm excited to be joined by Don Zoldai, founder and CEO of P3 Tech Consulting and host of the popular Dawn of Drones podcast. Welcome, Don. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And today we're also joined by Tom Sawyer, president of Grand Sky Development Company. Welcome, Tom. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dana. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And also joining us is Don Birchoff, CEO of True Weather Solutions. Welcome, Don. Thanks, Dana. Appreciate you inviting us on today. Absolutely. My pleasure. And last but not least, Captain Gage Buckley, Flight Safety Officer at the 319th Reconnaissance Wing, Grand Forks Air Force Base. Welcome, Captain Buckley. Good afternoon. Hey, thanks, Dana. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me on this podcast. All of you are participating in a panel titled Weather and the Impact on BV Loss Flights at the upcoming UAS Summit and Expo taking place October 4th through 5th in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So, Tom, let's start with you. Uh, can you talk about your role as president at Grand Sky Development Company and how you became involved in the UAS Microweather Services in North Dakota? Yeah, absolutely, Dana. Um, in my role with Grand Sky, it's my job to bring together the resources and the tools and the systems that help all of our partner organizations conduct uncrewed flight operations. To that end, and most importantly, um, several years ago, about four years ago, we installed a beyond visual line of sight system that has supported hundreds of BV loss operations for a variety of different companies. And those BV loss operations have become more and more sophisticated over time. Um, but during all of these BV loss operations, we've been working within a simple, singular operating paradigm. And that paradigm is that the aircraft leaves Grand Sky and then comes back to it in the same flight. It's an out and back flight operation, point A to point A. Now we're getting closer to offering package delivery operations out of Grand Sky. We're working on advanced air mobility operations and advanced air mobility research and testing. Um, and so we're gonna support flights that don't just leave and come back. We'll be supporting flights that go somewhere else, perhaps hundreds of miles away, and that aircraft may stay wherever its destination is for a while. So it's really going to be point A to point B operations, and it may not come back home to point A for days on end. Um, so we need to constantly know what that weather picture is going to be for those flight operations. To do that, we need very comprehensive and we need locally specific along the entire flight route. We need to know what the weather situation will be for that specific mission. Um, and so that mission then needs to be replicable. We need to endlessly be able to replicate and it has to be economically sustainable missions that weather does not impact, or at least if it's going to impact, we know how it may impact that particular mission, whether it's a package delivery or collecting information or advanced air mobility in some way, we need to know the weather impact. So to achieve that goal, we've turned to true weather solutions and mediumatics. We're working with both companies to develop a comprehensive modeling and forecast system. And we believe that uh, together our team will be able to support all kinds of uncrewed aircraft operations well into the future. Well, I'm certainly, as a resident of Grand Forks, really excited to see all of this development here happen in the next you know, few years. Um, and part of that you mentioned was true weather. So Don, I'm going to move on to you here. Um, ever since the first time I met you, I think probably about a couple years ago, um, I have known that if I do want the, to have the most accurate weather forecast, I should be coming to you. Um, so can you give our listeners a brief insight into your background and what attendees can expect to learn from your panel discussion at the UAS summit? Sure. Um, Thanks, Dana. Well, first off, it's a passion weather. That's why you always hear me talking about it. Um, since I was seven years old, I wanted to be a meteorologist. And I've had 40 years experience now in aviation, logistics, and weather, including running an Air Force base in Central Asia, um, 
I was assigned to technology director at the National Weather Service. And once I retired from government service after 28 years, I realized that um, with the drone and air taxi industry emerging, that this was going to be the most weather sensitive, mission critical uh, aviation operation we've ever had. And Captain Buckley could talk more about, you know, the fact that once you take a pilot off an aircraft, you've lost the best weather sensor you have. And our forecasts today are good. We've advanced greatly in the last 20 years. But honestly, once you take the aircraft, uh, pile up the aircraft, our accuracy really isn't as up to speed where we had the pilot to get us out of trouble when our forecasts weren't good. So we have to close those gaps now in low altitude weather because of the uncrewed nature of these aircraft. We got to build a picture of three dimensional weather that can replace uh, that loss of the pilot. And we have to make sure that we operate safely and that these businesses can make money. 30% of all manned aviation today that's canceled or delayed due to weather could have flown. They could have flown. The reason we don't fly is the uncertainty. And what Tom's investment and our investment in, uh, in, in this Meteo drone and this one kilometer resolution model is going to do is it's going to give us so much more certainty because we're going to have real data now to make decisions. And that's going to allow us to open up the airspace faster on days when it's uncertain. It's going to allow us to keep folks safe and it's going to allow us to target better windows to fly. And that's going to be a big, big revenue producer for uh, and the economy for North Dakota and the drone industry. Great. Thank you for sharing that with us, Don. We really appreciate it. And as you mentioned, um, there's missions that go out of uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base. Um, there's will be future missions out of uh, Grand Sky as well. So Captain Buckley, as a flight safety officer at the Grand Forks Air Force Base, can you share how having the most accurate weather predictions will impact your future missions? Hey, Dana. Yeah, thank you. So as aviators, every day we evaluate risk in every single sort we do. In particular, we work to mitigate those risks as they come up. Uh, one of those risks that we evaluate on every single sortie is, like Don said, weather. So as this technology continues and we're able to, kind of like Don said, uh, RPAs, right, you're kind of removed from the, uh, the see and avoid stuff, so we have to use other technology. But as that technology evolves, we can get a better weather picture of what's going on, which ultimately helps us mitigate that risk. Um, so this technology that'll build on that weather picture is vital for not only military, but civilian aviation as we go forward. So um, it's, it's really vital to aviation safety uh, across the board. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Safety is a key factor here um, and as should be talked about. And I'm very excited that you will be covering that on the stage at the UAS Summit. Um, to wrap things up here, Don, as moderator, can you give our audience a brief glimpse into the topics of discussion you'll be covering on the stage at the UAS Summit? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, talk about a rock star panel. It's a real honor to moderate this one. And, uh, you know, I've been I've been following Dawn and Grand Sky forever. And obviously, I'm a retired Air Force colonel. So Grand Forks Air Force Base is near and dear to my heart. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be talking about a couple things. So first, we're going to cover, you know, what, what what's the problem statement, right? Like what problem are we actually trying to solve? And so uh, we're going to be discussing the low altitude uh, weather data gap which is pretty significant. And then specifically, you know, the unique uh, weather patterns in North Dakota. And, uh, you know, so uh, the good captain here is going to give us some real world operational weather experience and, and uh, examples out right there out of North Dakota. And then Tom's going to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of his perspective, because as you mentioned, he straddles both the military and commercial slash civilian worlds uh, there at Grand Sky. So, weather impacts all of us and and he'll be talking from his perch you know what he's seeing and why he's uh partnered with with uh don and uh and grand forks on this um and then you know then we'll, we'll talk about the solution and you know what what the future is going to be and it's so excited so exciting to be able to talk about the nation's first statewide low altitude weather service there in north dakota so we're, we're going to talk about that and then some other uh, continuing research and development happening out there as well. And then, you know, what the future holds for all of us. So it should be an amazing panel. Hope to see you all out there. 
Awesome. Yeah, we are very excited for this panel as well. And we're excited for the rollout of the statewide and nationwide as well. So thank you all for being here. And uh, Don Birchoff, is the weather looking good for the UAS summit? I guess it might be too far out, but got to ask, right? 30% <laughs> chance of wind or rain. Oh, man. I'm hoping for at least 60s. <laughs> what a cop 30. out. What a cop out. In North Dakota, there could be snow, my friend. It really well, could. I'm going to bank. I, I will go on a, uh, out and say it won't snow, but uh, I'll, I will make that commitment. It won't snow, but that's as far as I'm going this far out. <laughs> Great. I did have somebody the other day say there better not be snow on the ground or I'm not coming. So um, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for no snow. And if there's rain, we'll take it. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks again, all of you, for joining us on our podcast today and giving our attendees a sneak peek into the discussion that will take place on Tuesday, October 4th at the UAS Summit and Expo. It was a pleasure chatting with you all. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Absolutely. And to Thank our you. listeners, not a problem. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in. And until next time.